Hey, friends all over the world. Dr. Kenan here. Um, I have a message for you. Hope you'll hear it. Hope you'll receive it. Beware of Jezebel and Delilah. Beware of Jezebel and Delilah. Beware of Jezebel and Delilah. As I was in prayer and meditation today, I realized that one of the spirits that has been raging in our generation is the spirit of Jezebel, along with the spirit of Delilah. And I'm going to explain this in just a moment. We know from the book of First Kings that Jezebel is the wife of King Ahab. She is the son, the daughter of, of uh, Ithbaal, who is the king of the Zidonians. She is actually a priestess to Baal. She's a false prophetess. She is marked by manipulation, intimidation, and control. Manipulation, intimidation, and control. We know from the book of Judges, I believe either the 14th or the 16th chapter, it talks about, it talks about Delilah. And Samson loved a woman named Delilah. I'm going to break this down because this is so important in this hour. If you're a prophetic person, if you have a prophetic call on your life, you need to beware of the spirit of Jezebel. And Jezebel is not just about a woman is not just gender specific, but it is a spirit that represents manipulation, intimidation, and control. Now, it is interesting that both Delilah and Jezebel are connected to, in scripture, to immorality. Both Delilah and Jezebel are connected to immorality. However, it is much deeper than that. In fact, the reason why Jezebel forms a marriage with Ahab is so that Baal worship or Baal, Baal worship, Baal worship, B-A-L-A-A-L, -A -A Baal worship is introduced into Israel. She, through her manipulation, actually is an agent to introduce Baal worship into Israel so that they begin to worship Baal. They begin to worship this, this false deity and they begin to engage in immorality in order to venerate Baal. I really got to break this down quickly if I can. I'm telling you, there is a spirit of Jezebel in the culture. It is, it is in politics. It's in media. It's in pulpits. It's in churches. It is operating not only in pulpits, it's operating in the pews. It is a spirit of manipulation and intimidation and control and seduction. Now you say, well, what, what does this have to do with what does it have to do with, with Delilah? Well, in both instances, Jezebel is sent to the prophet Elijah, who basically, it means that God is mighty, God is strong. He is a prophet of great strength. He is a prophet of great boldness. And yet Jezebel issues a witchcraft threat. And this threat intimidates Elijah to the point where he is willing to give up on his ministry. He's willing to give up on his calling. He's willing to give up on his assignment. And I'm telling you, when the spirit of Jezebel is working, prophets, hear me. This is a spirit of intimidation that is designed to get you out of your assignment. It is designed to get you out of your calling. It is a spirit of intimidation. It threatens the prophetic. It threatens the voice of truth and, and, and it, it breathes out threatenings against prophetic voices that if you say this, 
I'm going to do this. And if you keep on preaching, if you keep on prophesying, if you keep on speaking the truth, I'm going to, I'm going to do this to you. And so there's a spirit of intimidation, a spirit of manipulation. If it can't beat you, it'll join you. Yeah, it'll join you. It'll, it'll join the intercessory team. It'll join the worship team. It'll join the pastoral staff. It'll get close. And it will use its access to you to manipulate you. And if you can't be manipulated, it wants to control you, control you, control you. This is a spirit working in the earth today. We must be very aware of this. And then the counterpart to Jezebel is Delilah. Now, Delilah, the word Delilah actually means feeble. You need to hear this because this is very important. One of the assignments of the Delilah spirit is not just sexual immorality, but her assignment is to discover your weaknesses. See, the Jezebel spirit is sent to men and women of God to discover and expose your weaknesses. Her name means feeble, which is ironic because she was the lover of Samson, who was a judge of Israel, a man of great strength. But because of his interaction with Delilah, she discovers the source of his power. She discovers his weakness. She discovers the places where he is susceptible. Yeah, that's what, that's what the spirit of Delilah does. It gets close to expose. It doesn't just, it doesn't just attack you from a distance, but it, it closes the gap in order to discover the areas where you're weak. It, it wants to gain your confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It poses as a friend. It poses as someone that is a confidant. Yeah, it poses as a confidant, but they're actually a killer. They're an assassin, but they want to find out what your weaknesses are. See, this is very interesting because this is particularly hazardous in the prophetic. But it's a monitoring spirit. It asks you questions, but it doesn't ask you questions to encourage you. It doesn't ask you questions to encourage you or to give you an encouraging word or to uplift you or to cover you. It asks you questions to, to, to fault find. Yeah, to find out, man, yeah. So, so what are your weaknesses? What, what areas do you struggle in? Well, what areas are you susceptible? What, 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 what do you struggle with? I've had people ask me that. So what's your struggle? That is not in, in nine times out of ten, that is not a question from God. Nine times out of ten, that is a perverse question. Yeah, what's your struggle? What's your struggle? What you struggle with? What's your weakness? Tell me about tell me something about you that nobody else knows. Yeah, let me know yours. What's your secret? What's what's something that you ain't told nobody? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's let's find out. Yeah, what's going on with you? Yeah, brother so so what's going on with you? What's 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 going on in your life? But it's not there. To speak life into your situation is not there to encourage a situation. It's not there to protect you, to cover you, to pray for you. It's there to expose you. It's there to exploit the weakness. This is a spirit. It's a spirit designed to exploit the areas of your weakness. See, let me tell you what. What, what, what a friend does when you are weak in an area. I'm not talking about blatant sin. I'm talking about maybe there's a weakness. Maybe there's a weakness. Maybe there's a weakness in your life, an area where you need some more strength, where you need some more encouragement, where you need some more anointing or you need some more deliverance. And this is an area where you are, where you're weak and you expose the weakness. And instead of lifting you up in your weakness and covering you in your weakness, praying for you, no, but we need to help you get delivered and help you get through this and help you overcome this. No, it exploits your weakness by telling others the areas that you're weak in. By telling uh, telling your enemies your weakness. And by enemies, I'm not even talking about people, I'm talking about demons. It's a monitoring spirit. 
It's a monitoring spirit. And we need to be mindful of the spirits of Jezebel. See, Jezebel is, she uses witchcraft. She uses her words. Now I say her, but it's not a woman. It's a spirit. It is just codified by gender, but it's not a woman per se. It's, it's actually a spirit that can work in a man or a woman. Jezebel uses flattery, and if you don't give her the vineyard that she wants, she will have you assassinated. She'll first say, hey, you know, you're an awesome man of God. Man, you're, you're powerful. You, man, I never met anybody like you. May, 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 you know, man, I, I ain't never met nobody like you, man. You're the most amazing person I've ever met in my life. I've never met anybody like you, man. You, man, you're so anointed. You, you're just amazing. Hey, yeah, 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 man. There's an anointing on you. I, I've never seen anything like you. You're the most phenomenal person I've ever met. Until they don't get what they want from you. Ooh, you talking about narcissistic? When they don't get what they want, when you when you deny them what they want from you, here comes the manipulation. Here comes the gaslighting. Here comes the slander. Here comes the character assassination. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, Jezebel is a is a monitoring spirit. It's it's a she's FBI, Facebook investigator. Yeah, she wants to see what what's going on in your life and and then oh yeah, well yeah, so how's everything going with your marriage? Oh, yeah, y'all still struggling? Oh, man, I'll be praying for you, sis. But she ain't praying for you. She not praying for you. See, that's why prophets, stop telling everybody your business. Stop telling everybody what you need prayer about. Everybody's not a prayer warrior. Everybody is not praying for you. Some people are praying on you, P-R-E-Y, not P-R-A-Y-I-N-G. They're P-R-E-Y-I-N-G. They're praying, not praying. Sounds the same, but different spirit. Everybody's not a prayer warrior. Everybody don't want to know how they can cover you in prayer. Everybody don't want to know how they can lift you up and, and speak into your life. You need to be mindful. I'm not saying suspicious or doubtful, but at least be mindful of those that you are allowing into your prayer circle. Everybody's not an intercessor. Some people are interceptors. Yeah, they're interceptors, not intercessors. And so beware of this because I'm telling you, I'm telling you that we are living in a season. We are living in a season where the enemy is attacking the prophets. He's attacking prophetic voices. And his assignment is to shut you down and so that you will not speak the word of the Lord, so that you will not speak with boldness. See, because if he can expose your weakness, listen to this, he can neutralize your strength. If he can expose your weakness, he can neutralize your strength. He can know how to attack you. See, I'm, 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 you know, contrary to the popular belief, the devil doesn't know everything. He's not omniscient. He's not like God. He is not like God at all. He doesn't know everything about you. So the only way he can find out about you, he has to investigate you. He has to study you. He has to study your patterns. He has to fo follow you. He has to watch you. And this is what familiar spirits are all about. They monitor you. They watch you. They observe your behavior. And they look at areas where you're weak. They see, okay, well, they broke the fast an hour early. Lord have mercy. So they, they, they struggle with a food issue. They, they struggle with some, oh, they, they had to pray in tongues a little bit longer when they walked past that woman. So they got a little lust problem, don't they? Okay. Aha. See, that's how demons operate. Demons are surveillers. A spirit of surveillance. They watch you. They watch your patterns. They watch what you fall victim to. They watch what you yield to. And they use this data as a weapon against you.
to try to bring you into bondage and ultimately silence your prophetic voice. And this is why you need to be very mindful in this season to be a person of deep intercession in prayer. You got to pray. You got to begin to intercede. You got to begin to ask God to show you the areas in your life where you are weak. See, if Samson would have exposed his weakness to God, there would have been no room to expose his weakness to Delilah. And may God scatter every Delilah in your life, every Jezebel in your life, every person is there for nefarious purposes. Every person is there to manipulate and control. Every person is there to gather information about you so they can understand the areas where you're weak in. I've been through that. I t I've shared my story many, many times and I would encourage you right now Go get my book, Overcoming Familiar Spirits, because I talk about this issue. Sometimes the reason why you keep going through attack after attack after attack, and the reason why you keep going around the same mountain over and over and over again is because there is a familiar spirit that's been assigned to you. And once you begin to understand and discern the assignment of that familiar spirit, you can now begin to exercise your authority. Because one of the things I have to understand is that the Bible says in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the 12th verse, that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness, the Greek word skotos. That means something that deals with blindness or spiritual ignorance, blindness or ignorance. It means that the enemy is able to exploit the areas in our lives that we are unaware of. The Bible puts it this way in the Old Testament. Hosea 4, 6 says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Sometimes the reason why we keep going through something and the reason why the devil keeps attacking us is because we've yet to confront the issue. We've yet to confront the spirit. We've yet to confront the strong man. We've yet to deal with the insidious nature of the attack. And so the enemy keeps coming. He keeps coming. He keeps coming. He keeps coming because there's an open door. See, I, I teach my leaders, weaknesses are not sins. Hear this, and the name of my book is called Overcoming Familiar Spirits, Deliverance from Unseen Demonic Enemies and Spiritual Debt. Go get it right now. Weaknesses are not sins. Everybody God has ever used has a weakness. Look at Abraham, he had a proclivity toward lies. Look at Jacob, he had a proclivity toward manipulation and deceit. Look at Samson, he had a proclivity toward women. Look at David, he had a weakness in his flesh for, for uh, Bathsheba. Look at Peter, he had an anger problem. Look at Paul, he was argumentative and he was, he, he, he was defensive. See, everybody in, in, in the Bible that God has ever used had a weakness. But we know from scripture, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, that when we are weak, then is he strong inside of us. But the issue is being able to identify those weaknesses. See, the devil also knows that your weaknesses are very significant. And that's why he sends the Delilah spirit to you. To try to discover your weaknesses. To discover the areas where you are susceptible. The areas where you have a proclivity. See, everybody's not tempted by the same thing. Your weakness is not sin, but if your weakness is not addressed, it can cause you to stumble. I'm preaching real good. If your weakness is not addressed, it can cause you to stumble. See, and, and Delilah understands that. She knows that, man, if I can just get his weakness, if he can just divulge the sensitive areas, if he can divulge the areas that I struggle Everybody does not qualify to know your struggle. Everybody is not qualified to handle your weakness. And again, I'm not talking about blatant sin. I'm not talking about your weaknesses that you have a side chick on the side or you got, come on somebody, or you're stealing money from the church. That's not a weakness. That's called a sin. You're breaking the law. Come on somebody. I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about an area where you're saying, Lord, I need help in this area. Lord, I, I need your strength in this area because I'm not quite fully there yet in that area, whatever it is. And so everyone is not qualified to discuss your weaknesses. Your weaknesses are not for everybody. And some of you don't realize that you are exposing your weak areas to a spirit of Delilah. 
You're exposing your air, your weaknesses to someone who is not there to cover you. They're not there to counsel you. They're not there to correct you. They're not there to help you. They're there to expose you. Good God Almighty. So here, here's what I'm saying today. I'm telling you that there's a spirit and we must be mindful as prophetic men and women. We must understand our assignment and our marching orders. And we must recognize that the spirit of Jezebel is raising. Why? Because the prophet carries in his mouth. The prophet carries in her mouth the ability to change seasons. The prophet carries in her mouth the ability to change seasons. The prophet carries in his mouth the ability to change seasons because the word of God is what changes seasons. And so because the, the enemy knows the power of the prophetic, he seeks to silence the prophetic and to shut it down. That's why in this decade of the pay in the Hebraic calendar, we have seen a, such a great attack on the prophetic. We have seen a, such a great assault on prophetic voices to silence the prophetic, to, to hinder the prophetic, to shut down the prophetic so that you won't speak the counsel of God. So that you won't prophesy, so that you won't pro, pro, uh, um, proclaim the word of the Lord. The enemy knows that and that's why he rages against you and he uses as his instruments the spirits of Jezebel and Delilah. The spirits of Jezebel and Delilah. Everybody is not a friend. Everybody is not a confidant. Everybody is not an intercessor. Some people are interceptors. Come on, somebody. Some people don't some people don't come close to you to connect. They come to inspect. Good God. They're not connectors, they're inspectors. Sorry, I'm a little I was a little sleepy last night. See the little bags under my eyes. Okay, there you go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So what do we have to do? We have to go before God. Come on, somebody. We got to go before God. I'm telling you, go watch my video about God exposing in this season. It's on this timeline. Go watch it. And I want you to share this because... I'm telling you, one of the most insidious strategies, we're seeing it in the media, we're seeing it in politics, is the Jezebel spirit. She is so manipulative. She is so deceitful. She is so litigious. She looks for accusations. Hey, Anna, baby. Hey, what you doing? Okay, baby. That's my little baby daughter. She twists things. She gains evidence. Areas that you're weak and uses those weaknesses against you. Are you listening to me? So, Father, right now, in Jesus' name, we come against these spirits. And, Lord God, we come out from under their influence. If there's a spirit of Jezebel working in the lives of your people, a spirit of Delilah working in the lives of your people, that, Lord God, they will be delivered from these spirits. And that you would render judgment against these spirits. And, Father, let none of us, none of us come into agreement with the spirit. Let none of us be operating in a Jezebel spirit. Let none of us be operating in a spirit of manipulation, intimidation, or control. Let none of us be operating in a spirit of seduction. Father God, let there be repentance because repentance destroys the power of Jezebel. Repentance destroys the power of Delilah. And Father, let us repent if there's been any area of manipulation, of seduction, of intimidation, of control operating in our lives so that that spirit has no legal grounds to operate in our lives. In Jesus' name, somebody share this. 
And remember that Jesus is Lord. Bye-bye.